phone despite its price has made a big buzz all over the world. I've been using this phone for the past few weeks and this is the complete review of the new CMF Phone 1 by Nothing. We'll cover the specs, the design, performance, camera, display, speakers, battery life, everything. My favorite part about the CMF Phone 1 is the display and I'll get to it shortly. So let's get started. This is the first phone from a company called CMF, a budget focused sub brand of Nothing which is famous for their unique product designs at a competitive price. So let's start with the price because that's the headliner. It comes with 128 or 256 gigs of storage. You can also get it for 6 gigs or 8 gigs of RAM. This phone starts officially at $200. It's still not widely available and that has caused the price to fluctuate a lot. I have the 8 gigs model and I got this phone for $250. Now I cannot find one for less than $290. In India you can get the base version of this phone for 16,000 rupees and I think the phone is very competitively priced and you're getting a lot for it. These are the specs of the phone. You can pause here to read but we'll talk about all of these in this video. Let's start with the design. This is a very good looking phone to be honest. I like how it looks. It's very common design though, squared off sides with curved corners. The front is a 6.7 inch screen with almost symmetric thin bezels. The asymmetry is not immediately noticeable though. There is a front camera cutout in the middle. The back of the phone is plastic and they are not trying to hide it. It has a very matte finish to it and so it doesn't catch any fingerprints like the metal or glossy phones. There is a CMF logo on the back with some regulatory text. There is also a screw at the bottom. I'll get to it shortly. The camera module is on the top left in an island of its own. I really like what they've done with the camera module here. It seems like they have two lenses but there is only one wide angle camera. The other one is depth sensor. I got this phone in a light mint color. The other colors of the phone are a bright orange, black and blue. Not all phones have the same finish on the back. The finish of the orange and the blue phones are slightly different. I think they mimic vegan leather. So check the finish of the color you would buy. Overall, the phone looks very premium and aesthetics are very pleasing. Especially for this price, you won't find a unique good looking phone. CMF has done a very good job. I also really like how the phone feels in my hand. It's very comfortable, easy to hold, grippy and doesn't poke anywhere. When I hold the phone, it feels pretty light. You know, the phone may be premium to look at, but the second you hold it, due to its feeling light and hollow, it doesn't scream as premium to hold. In other design aspects, the 6.7 inch screen came with a thin pre-installed screen protector, which is nice. There is a single speaker grill at the bottom, a SIM card slot, a mic, USB-C port and a SD card slot. Power button on one side and volume button on the other side. Pretty basic. You can get 128 or 256 gigs of storage, but it's expandable using micro SD up to 2 terabytes. Expandable storage is pretty common in budget phone segment. It has 5G, Wi-Fi 6 and a 5000 mAh battery. We'll discuss the battery life in detail later too. There is one more unique feature of the CMF phone and that is its back cover. You see, the back of the phone has these screws. It gives the phone an industrial look but it's also functional. Like the old Nokia phones, you can easily replace the back case of the phone by removing these screws. You can get other color cases and replace the back case easily on your own. When you remove the case, you can feel how flimsy and cheap the back case is but still CMF charges $35 for a new case. You can see there is a bigger circle at the bottom left which is also a removable screw. This is for attaching other CMF accessories. Currently, there are three, a lanyard, a kickstand and a card case. I think these accessories are $25 each, but it's unavailable to buy right now here. The card case is magnetic, by the way, which means you can attach other third-party magnetic accessories too. This is a unique selling point for this phone. Since the back case is removable and has screws, the phone itself is not good with dust or water. It has IP52 rating, which means it's good only for light splashes. Okay, with just the design, I think CMF has done a great job. But now let's talk about the display. One of my favorite features of the phone. It's a 6.67 inch AMOLED display and I really like it a lot. The bezels are also thin. It has a peak brightness of 2000 nits, but in normal conditions, it goes up to 700 nits. It's also a 120 Hertz high refresh rate display. Apple, please take a note for your iPhone 16. The screen is nice, sharp, contrasty, responsive, and with high refresh rate 
display feels very smooth. In fact, due to 120Hz display and the touch sampling, it feels smoother than iPhone 15. Colors are good too and I'm loving this display. Despite having an AMOLED display, it doesn't have an always on screen. But when you tap or move, it can show an always on like screen with basic information. It's a little finicky but there is an option. Despite having a good screen, there is one thing which I don't like about it. That's the under display optical fingerprint reader. It's optical rather than ultrasonic which is expected at this price but the sensor is unreliable. It doesn't work even when the fingers have slight dust or dampness. There were many instances where I had to repeatedly try to unlock my phone using the fingerprint reader but luckily it has face unlock option which gets the job done easily when I wake the phone. Okay, that's the display. How about the performance? It has a MediaTek Dimensity 7300 8 core processor. It's made with a 4 nanometer process. That means it's gonna be efficient. The Dimensity 7300 is a mid range budget processor, but while using the phone, it does not feel that way. Normal usage, scrolling, swiping, opening apps are all fluid and snappy. Performance for normal task is good. I tried to play some games and noticed some stuttering. It was also not smooth in some parts, but the phone did not not heat at all during the heavy workload. Tried using the phone for extended use, took long 4K videos and still there was no heating. Experience also did not degrade which is a good thing. Performance is more than acceptable for this price. The OS is smooth and efficient too, which helps make the phone feel snappier. The phone comes with 6 or 8 gigs of RAM, but there is an option to expand the RAM up to 8 gigs more using the SSD space. There is something called game mode, which based on my research doesn't do much to the performance, but improves picture quality and mutes some notifications. Overall, daily performance is very smooth and I'm very happy with it. Next, let's talk about cameras. It may look like it has dual cameras, but it has only a single 50 megapixel main camera. No ultra wide, no telephoto. The other camera looking thing is a depth sensor, which is used for taking portrait photos. I underestimated the camera initially thinking about the price. Given enough light, like daytime, the photos are actually good. Lot of details, decent colors, sharp, vivid, and looks like a $500 camera. The colors and dynamic range could have been better, but nothing to complain about. It takes 12 megapixel photos by default but it can take 50 megapixel photos on demand too. Portrait mode shots are also decent in good light. Edges are not proper but still very usable photos. Here one of them is a photo from CMF phone 1 and the other one is a thousand dollar phone. Can you find which photo is from which phone? Low light? That's a whole nother story. Now the photo, one is CMF phone and the other is a thousand dollar phone. Now I think you can tell which is a $250 CMF phone. In low light, the quality degrades significantly and the colors are inaccurate and a lot of details are lost. Portrait mode, even in average light, takes a hit and that is the case with the front and back camera as well. But in good light, the photos from both the front and back camera is great. It can take 4K videos at 30p and the videos are sharp, smooth and looks like an expensive phone and there is even a slow-mo at 1080 120p. One thing to note about videos, there is a significant crop for 4K 30p. Even if you capture at 1080p, there is still a huge crop. This is mainly because of the mid-range processor which cannot read all the pixels so quickly. There is an action mode for the videos and there is even more crop there. Overall, I like the camera. My 90% of the photos are in good light and I'm confident that this camera will work great for those 90% shots for the price again. If you're gonna get this phone for someone who doesn't pixel peep, they're gonna love it for sure. Awesome design, snappy performance, good camera. Where did they make the sacrifice? To the speakers. It's a single mono speaker at the bottom, no stereo, the speakers also get decently loud, no complaints there too, but they lack a full sound. It has a very little bass, sometimes when I'm watching a music video, I hear only the voice primarily and very little music, especially the low ends. You will find the speakers just fine unless you start comparing to more expensive phones to know what you're missing. CMF had to cut corners somewhere to bring it to this price point. One place where CMF didn't skimp? 
battery. It has a 5000 mAh battery. I've had no issues going through the whole day without charging. It has a 33 watt wired charging, which is not too fast compared to the competition. It doesn't come with a power adapter in the box either, just USB-C cable. It has no wireless charging, but has a 5 watt reverse wired charging. It has a feature called adaptive battery, which will reduce battery usage for low usage apps. Overall, battery life is good and been reliable for most part. One thing I need to mention, I noticed these short sprints where the battery level dropped quickly compared to other times. Not sure if this is because of an inefficient or a demanding app, but still I could get through the whole day without any problem. Finally, I want to talk about the OS. It's the same Nothing OS 2.6 seen on their Nothing phones. It's based out of Android 14. I got an update as soon as I unboxed it. Nothing has promised three years of OS support. It's less compared to Samsung or Google, but again, you will have to look at the price too. The OS itself is very good. I feel it's very light, efficient, and doesn't add any bloat fan on top. There are neat customizations sprinkled all over the OS. You get to map power button to Google Assistant, double press to open camera, enough customization in settings, etc. Usage was also very responsive, never felt a glitch or bug so far. Interface is clean too. There is a heavily skinned yet lightweight UI based on nothing theme if you're into that. The system settings and everything else is nothing theme by default. I really like what nothing has done with the OS and I give a big thumbs up. Okay, what is my overall recommendation? Is the phone worth $250 or 16,000 rupees? Absolutely. There are certain trade-offs CMF had to make to bring the phone to this price point like the speakers, fingerprint reader, plastic back, MediaTek processor and single camera. But CMF has compensated for it with an efficient OS, good main camera, great display, nice design and other unique features. It will satisfy beyond your $250 expectation. Okay, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you all in the next one. This is Anjana. Bye-bye.